When it comes to your food, local is just better. Shopping at your community-owned co-op grocery store for food that's locally grown and produced can make a difference in the world. After all, we value the people and the planet in everything we do. And we're dedicated to connecting you with the local suppliers that help keep our community vibrant and strong. Visit Green Star, your community co-op. Shopping local makes a world of difference. Go local. Go co-op. Go Green Star. Thanks for joining us on episode 11 of Get Foodie. This episode, we're getting back to basics with a food that's a main ingredient of many people's diets from birth, milk. Breast milk is the best food for babies, providing them with nourishment that perfectly meets their needs, adapting as they grow, providing them with immunity against many illnesses, and reducing the risk of allergies later in life. Milk from animals has also served as a fresh whole food throughout humanity's recorded history. Unprocessed, unadulterated milk provides a balance of proteins, carbohydrates, and fats, as well as enzymes to aid digestion and other beneficial nutrients. Unfortunately, within the past couple generations, the milk that the average American consumes has changed. Milk has been altered in order to allow for large-scale production and distribution. Most milk available today is not whole, fresh, natural milk which has caused a skyrocketing of milk allergies and dairy intolerances. Today we're going to visit the farm that's literally next door, Scheffler's Organic Farm. We'll learn how to milk a cow the old-fashioned way, and then we'll take that fresh whole milk and make a couple of the most popular dairy products, butter and yogurt. Thanks for joining us, and we hope you do try this at home. When we arrived at the barn, we started by putting on some hygienic and, of course, very stylish foot covers. Then Eileen gave us a tour and talked to us about milking cows the old-fashioned way with the help of a very sweet and patient member of her herd. Okay, it's milking time. And... I usually prep the cow so she knows it's time to let her milk down. And just wipe her off. I do this twice a day. And it's best if it's 12 hours apart. Cows are creatures of habit. So they like to know when milking's gonna happen. And I wipe them off and she just knows it's time to start milking. So her milk will start letting down. Feel her teeth getting plump. And when we milk, it's it's not really how hard you squeeze, but just kind of down and squeeze. So here it comes. So how long would it take if you were gonna milk? all of the, the milk that this cow has. Yeah, this cow gives um, about 35 pounds night and morning, wow. 70 pounds a day. How much is that in uh, the quick measurement? Um, almost nine pounds to a gallon. Wow. So it would take me a long time. I'm not used to milking <laughs> this way. Do you ever milk the cows by hand? No. No? No. Nope. Always with a, a milking machine unit. And how long does it take to milk the cows with the milking machine? With a machine, about five minutes. Okay. They usually have a little bit more milk in the hindquarters. And she's doing very good. She's standing nice and still. She's a nice, quiet cow. Mm -hmm. And a cow works really hard. Um, in producing milk. She has to drink a lot of water to produce milk. Um, she eats over 50 pounds of forage. Yeah. And, and I would think, because that's, what, six or seven gallons of milk a day? Mm -hmm. So that must be pretty hard work. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, can I give you a try? Sure. 
Um, come in and stand up well, this way next door. Mom, how about She's nice and quiet, but yeah. I don't want you to get hit. She's okay. Kind of, kind of lean against her a little bit. Mom, how do it? Oh, yeah. There you go. It's yeah, it's more pulling down. Mm -hmm. And you let it pump up in your hand right. and then squeeze. It's yeah, I can see how it would be a very rhythmic oh, kind of a process. Sure, come on. Let's go on quiet. Lean up against the cow, turn this way. Lean up against the cow. Yep. And then reach down the cow. So pull down and squeeze at the same time. Just with your fingers, your first two fingers, kind of. There you go. And work down. There's definitely a little bit of a trick to it. There you go. And then squirt it into your other hand so you can feel how warm it is. <laughs> 101.3 degrees. Wow. That's the house temperature. They're quite a bit warmer than people. Mm -hmm. Mama, I don't feel. Okay. Hold your hand out while it's for a minute. Hold on your hand. Gotcha. <laughs> That's milk. <laughs> Did you want to try milking them? Real gently, squeeze it. Emma still remembers nursing, so. Yep, this is true. You're a brave girl. <laughs> Can I do it with me? Go ahead, stick your hand up there. up on farms. We've been on farms our whole life, um, small d dairy farms. Um, we both went to college after graduating from high school. Um, I went for vet tech and Ed went for ag engineering. And then Ed worked away from the farm for a couple of years and decided that, well, maybe he would like to come back. <laughs> so that was in 1979. And um, I went on and worked for a couple of years and Went back to school for a couple of years, and we were married in 1981. So we've been farming together since then. In '84, we had a child, and <laughs> we've been doing it ever since. So. Wow. Has the way you farm changed over the years? Oh, yes. Yeah, the farm has really gone, seen a lot of changes. Um, Ed's dad was, you know, came out of, started farming after World War II when fertilizer was the big thing. I mean, you know, you put fertilizer on and you can get lots of corn. <laughs> and he just jumped into that wholeheartedly. And, and the dealers would, you know, they'd tell you how much you should buy, and farmers would buy it. Wow. And never even think about it, because wow. they could get big yields, you know, and it was so exciting for them. And Ed and his dad always, when they farmed together, were, you know, in this, this tension of, you know, let's try not using so much. And, well, you're not going to get a good crop. And so as we, you know, gradually took over more, Ed did try that to save money, his wife was his motivation. And he noticed that you could cut back. Mm -hmm. And still get a good crop, and uh, and then you know we just started hearing more um, ecological things like cover crops, and he he really hated um, doing the spraying and the pesticides and the herbicides, especially then after we had children. That was just you know it didn't seem right that you know his kids couldn't come and play with him after he'd right. been out working, 
and you know he'd bring his clothes in and say you know don't touch you know put these right in the washer don't touch them right. wash them twice that sort of thing so um, there was a farmer over in Dryden that we heard at a meeting that he converted um, done the transition to organic and he came home and said I think we could do that and everyone says you know how can you take care of your cows and how are they going to be healthy right and so you know I could see that Ed was really pretty determined to try this and so I just started I said well I've got to learn how to do this and I found that there were amazing things that you can do without antibiotics for cows and garlic is a, a big one and uh, that was exciting to learn that and so in 2000, you know, we took the big jump and we, we started transitioning. Mm -hmm. And it took three years at that time. And so we had to transition all of our land and uh, the cows for a year of, of transition. And uh, we never looked back. It's, it was a wonderful change. The best thing about the organic community is the willingness to help each other. Um, there just is less competition. Be, I think because it's more economically viable, right. that therefore people are willing to help you. And so people were willing to you know, tell me what, how to take care of our cows. And, oh, that's great. And the organic um, certifiers have been nothing but helpful to us. Um, so it, it's really been fun to look back and, and see how it became an organic farm. And it just continues to offer so many opportunities. You know, like, going to visit a classroom and telling about what you do, that's that's really fun. Yeah. And the farm store, that's you know, grown out of just wanting to get good whole food to people. Mm -hmm. I just don't like to see so many people not feeling well. And I think food could, could really help them. Emily says I'm not a, that good of a cook, it's just I have good ingredients. <laughs> <laughs> so, gee, thanks a lot, Emily. <laughs> That's that's a sort of a mixed compliment. You make wonderful food, but <laughs> you're not all that talented. It's really the, the good products you start out with. Well, I think that it's true when you're starting with basic ingredients, and uh, especially when you're just trying to enjoy the natural flavor mm -hmm. of the ingredients, it's so easy. Mm -hmm. You know, it it doesn't take a lot of work to let the natural flavor shine through and get the benefits of the food. So tell me about the cows, what's different about the way that you handle them now than the way that you did before? Uh, the, the biggest thing with um, our organic herd and our dairy is that they are pastured. Mm -hmm. um, that's required by the organic um, regulations. But it's interesting, this farm has always pastured our cows. Mm -hmm. And so when we transitioned, people were saying, oh, pasturing is so wonderful, your cow health will just improve so much, <laughs> and you'll have all this extra time. And we kind of looked at each other and said, how come we haven't had all this extra time before? <laughs> because we've always pastured. The hormones are not good in the milk, and they aren't good for the cow. It's just a, a bad situation all around. And we don't need it. You know, we have high-producing cows without it, with good management, and good care. Um, exercise is important. Um, quality of feed. Um, we are really particular about the quality of feed. It really is something to eating the cows eating local as well mm -hmm. as humans eating local. Sure. Um, I noticed that when we're most almost 100% sustainable, mm -hmm. sometimes we have to buy a little extra corn. But when we are feeding cows the feed from our land, mm -hmm. I think they're healthier yeah. and they produce better. So that just makes me think that humans really need to right. eat local um, and right. not truck their food all across the, the world. Well, and especially because you know exactly where the cow's food is coming from. Mm -hmm. So it, it follows down the chain. You know, the milk and meat that's produced from the cows is coming from the food that you're feeding them and you mm -hmm. know the quality that it is. Mm -hmm. Um, what about cows getting sick? You know, mm -hmm. um, the, the whole issue with antibiotics in the milk is, is something that people talk about. Have you seen a change in, in that since you transitioned? Um, you know, every living, breathing animal occasionally gets ill. Sure. Um, and what we have found is that you, the immune, um, keeping the level of immunity up is really mm -hmm. important. And it's just like that for humans. Um, you take good care of yourself, you're not going to get sick as often. Yeah. 
So what we have here is whole milk, um, just as it comes from the cow. Most of the time when we go to the grocery store, there's so many endless selections of different kinds of milk you can get. This is non-homogenized milk. So when the milk comes from the cow, it has proteins, it has fat, it has sugars, it has enzymes to help us digest all of those different things. And Mommy, can I drink milk? go right ahead and drink some milk. All right. Um, so as it comes from the cow, the milk is not homogenized, which means that over time, the, the fat on the milk will separate to the top. So there's about this much fat that's risen to the top of our milk. And what we're going to do is start off by making butter. Now, Mama, can I make butter too? Yes, you can also make butter. So the milk fat is used to make butter, cream, sour cream, um, creme fraiche, cream cheese, and so many different dairy products. What we're going to do today is one of the very simplest things that we can do using just a jar. We're going to make butter. Now in this jar already I have some cream that I've collected from the top of other milk that we've been drinking. And we're just going to pour the cream from this jar into the other jar. It just pours right off the top. It's pretty simple. And then comes the really high-tech part of this whole operation. We have to shake it. Who wants to shake it? I do. Okay, Rebecca gets the first turn and then Emma gets a second turn. Yay! It takes quite a bit of shaking. The, the quick, easy way to do this, you can use a blender or you can use a, um, any kind of mixer because basically what you're doing is agitating the milk fat so that the butter separates. <laughs> yep. Your turn. Shake it, shake it, shake it. <laughs> Very bubbly. Yep. There you go. Another thing that you can do is take the jar and just roll it back and forth along the floor, which will agitate the cream enough that it'll separate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's a couple things to keep in mind when you're making butter. One of them is that the cream that you're working with should be room temperature. Um, if it's not warm enough, the butter fat won't separate out from the cream. And then the second thing is that whether when you're just shaking it by hand, you want to kind of actually slam it a little bit, which um, is a little more effective in separating the butter out. All right, so now we're done. And... What we have here is butter that's floating to the top and buttermilk. So when you take the cream off the milk, you shake that so that the butter fat separates. What you're left with is buttermilk and the butter itself. Mama, so we're going to pour that. Pour now? Of course. We're going to pour the buttermilk off. I this is the next step. We're going to take the buttermilk off. That's all the milk. Yep. Now the last step is just to rinse the butter with cold water. So since we've got the butter in our jar, I'm just going to pour a little ice water in there. And this is going to help take the last of the buttermilk off, which will make the butter keep longer. So I'm just going to shake it up a little bit with the ice water to get the last of the buttermilk off. You want to shake for me? Can I shake too? Yep. Cool. Okay, we're going to put one more cold water rinse there. And again, the cold water won't wash away any of the butter, but it will get any little bits of buttermilk off. You 
can see the water gets a little cloudy and the butter is firming up. And there we have fresh butter. Yay. It looks sort of like... Yeah, it's in little bits, yeah. isn't it? Are we going to mold it? Like yep, we're going to push it together so it makes a solid piece because that'll be easier. Can you have one butter? <laughs> you can taste the butter. Ooh, can I taste the butter? Here you go. Taste the butter. Is it yummy? I have one more taste of that. No, that's okay. So we're just going to press it. There's a little bit of water still in there that will drain off. And we're done. What do you think? I'm pretty good. Sure, you want to smush it for me? Mush the butter. No, I don't say eat the butter. Smush the butter. Yogurt's one of my favorite foods, so now we're going to mix them. Yep. The second thing that we're going to do with our whole milk is we're going to make yogurt. Now this is a little more time consuming than making butter, but it's actually pretty simple. We're starting with a quart of whole milk, and what we're going to do is heat the milk on the stove until it's about 160 degrees. Heating actually helps with the process of, of the yogurt thickening and the bacteria creating that, that result. So what we've done is heated it and then cooled it down till it's just about 106 degrees. You can use a candy thermometer, the kind that slip, clips onto the side of the pan is the easiest for this. Now once we've done that, all we're going to do is add two tablespoons of plain yogurt. You can use yogurt from the last batch you made once you get started doing it. So we're going to stir the two tablespoons of yogurt into our heated and cooled milk. Sure, you can stir. Meanwhile, we're preheating the oven to 200 degrees. One thing that's very important is to make sure that all of the equipment that you're using when you're making yogurt is clean. Because we're growing live cultures and healthy bacteria, what we want to do is make sure that nothing that we don't want gets mixed in. So we're working with, um, here's a towel. Thanks. So we want to make sure that everything we're working with has been washed in hot soapy water and is very, very clean. Or you could even sterilize it. Okay, then we just pour the yogurt into a clean glass jar. Is that too much? Is it too much? No. I'm going to put a lid on the jar. Oops. All right, now what has to happen is. Shake? No, this isn't butter, this is yogurt. We're not going to shake it. So we need to keep the yogurt warm but not hot for at least eight hours. This is actually a little flexible. If you like really thick, tangier yogurt, you want to leave it for a little longer. And if you, um, if you want your yogurt a little bit thinner or you don't want so much tanginess to it, then you can do it for less time. So I generally do it overnight for about eight to 10 hours. And the way that I do that is I fill a bowl with hot tap water. I put the jar into the bowl. Um, the water needs to come up about to the top of the jar. And then I put it into an oven that's been preheated to 200 degrees and immediately turn the oven off. So the warmth of the oven and the hot water is going to keep the yogurt warm over a long period of time so that the cultures can develop. And after um, 8 to 12 hours, the next morning is what we usually do. Thanks. To there. there it is. Our yogurt. And it's yogurt. Yay! Can I try it now? We're going to. So then you can refrigerate the yogurt. It'll continue to thicken up a little bit when you refrigerate it. it. Okay, we're going to try it. And that's all it takes to make yogurt. 
All right, now that our yogurt's all done, we're going to try it out with one of my favorite things, which is a breakfast yogurt parfait. Um, we're gonna eat it, that's right. Yeah, we are. So um, we're gonna layer the yogurt with frozen raspberries and so I've got a couple different kinds of granola here and some maple syrup. So we're gonna start out everybody's parfait with some fresh yogurt. Would you like some raspberries? I want raspberries too. Okay, I'm gonna put a layer of granola in mine. I want some. Would you like some granola? This one. Okay, let's try this one. Okay, Rebecca, now let's put a layer of yogurt in between every layer. Never tried that one. Oh, you can try that one next. I can do them all by myself. All right, you can. Okay. I can. I can okay, I can put some it. in. There we go. It's maple syrup season, so it's so nice to have fresh local maple syrup. Okay, another layer of yogurt. I can put it in. Okay, you do it. Can I have some yogurt after her? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very good. Okay, pretty. that's <laughs> good. And I guess if you don't want your parfait in nice layers, you could just stir it all together. It'll still taste good. Wouldn't this be good if we could have something like this every morning? <laughs> <laughs> it does make a great breakfast. And you can use whatever fruit is in season. You can use different kinds of granola. You can improvise and put so many different things in here. All right, and there it is. A delicious yogurt parfait. Mm. Berries are one of my favorite, but this is good with apples or... Mucaba, try yours. You want to try mine? Okay. I'm going to use mine. Okay. Blueberries are one of my favorites in a parfait too. And you can also turn it into a dessert and use layers of crushed up cookies or maybe leftover pieces of cake in there with the berries and the yogurt. It's very adaptable. Mm. Mm. Not the maple syrup, the um, what is it? Okay. You almost finished yours. Oh. Good. Uh-oh, that's enough. Don't spill too much, okay?